Today, I have the absolute pleasure of welcoming Jessica Rhodes on to Uncover Wealth Radio. Jessica is a leading expert in how to leverage podcast guesting for increased brand awareness, more leads, and higher profits. She created the podcast booking industry in 2013 when she founded Interview Connections, the first and leading agency of its kind. Along with her business partner, Margie, Jessica has quickly scaled Interview Connections to over $1 million in annual revenue with nearly no direct marketing or advertising. Their team in-house booking agents and they are podcast powerhouses behind many successful businesses, including Ali Brown, Perry Marshall, A. Weber, USA Financial, and more. So thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. It is a pleasure to have you, Jessica. Annette, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So today I want to focus on how service-based businesses can leverage podcast interviews to find clients. So Jessica, can you start off by telling us why we should even really care about podcasting? Yeah. Yeah. Well, many service-based entrepreneurs, I would actually probably say all service-based entrepreneurs, you know, they get and retain clients for more than just the service they're offering. It really is about their story and their experience and their expertise. And that is communicated so perfectly through conversations, which is why podcasting and being a podcast guest, which is what I often call just podcast guesting. People say, what's that mean? It's just being a guest on podcasts. It's a term somebody invented to describe the strategy and I like it. Yes. Um, when you're a podcast guest, you have the ability to really share your story, how you got into what you do, what makes you an expert, how you help your clients. Like you can really give the whole picture which creates this, this stick factor with people that learn about you. So you're not just an ad that they're scrolling past on Facebook. There's someone that, that, that you, they really feel like they know you. And that's the power of doing podcast interviews, both hosting them and being a guest. You can really have people feel like they know you without ever actually meeting you. Mm, I know that I certainly have followed a lot of people on social media from hearing them interviewed on other people's podcasts as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, if we want to do this podcasting strategy, do we need to have our own podcast? Do we need all the stuff that it feels like might come with that? You know, all the tech and all the, all the equipment and the time. Do we need that if we're going down a podcasting strategy? You really don't. You know, the beautiful part about interview based podcasts is that you can be leveraging somebody's podcast audience without having to produce and host your own show. Now, I will say many of my clients end up wanting to host their own show after they appear on many shows as a guest because they see where the gap in the marketplace is. They see, oh my gosh, I've been on, you know, 50 different marketing podcasts, but nobody is hosting a show with my particular angle and my unique value. So I will say many people do end up wanting to start one eventually, but being a guest is such a perfect way to get the benefit of podcasting without actually having your own show. It's so much easier. And quite frankly, I recommend people start as a guest. You're actually a much better host when you appear on shows as a guest because you get the practice of being on the other side. Um, so I think it's a really, really effective and easy way to get started. And not to mention just practice speaking into a microphone, you know, it's, it's, I forget cause I've been doing this for seven years, but the first time you actually have a conversation where you're speaking into a microphone, it is a new, it's like you're kind of riding a bike for the first time. You kind of, yeah. you got to get used to it. So I definitely think it's a good idea to guest on shows before you really commit to investing in your own podcast. Nice. So if we think, okay, I want to, I want to guest on a podcast how on earth do we go about doing that? Do we just have to say to, I mean, how do we find the podcasts? How do we, how do we actually get on them? Yes, absolutely. Well, laying out, just like with any marketing strategy, you want just that. You need a strategy. Many people think I want to be a podcast guest, so I'll just, you know, post on social media and say, hey, who wants to interview me? And there's no rhyme or reason. There's no targeting at all. And there's no 
like clarity around the goal of what you're going to get from the time you're spending on those interviews and with those people. So that's number one. I always recommend the first step is getting clear on your goal for the strategy. For example, if you're going to do weekly videos, what do you want to get out of those weekly videos? If you're going to send an email to your list, why are you sending it? Like know what the result is that you want to achieve from that strategy. Because many people I talk to that say, well, I've done podcast interviews. I never got anything out of it. They didn't go into it with a strategy or a clarity around the goals and the results they wanted to achieve from it, which is kind of, of course, you're not going to get anything out of it if you don't even know what you want. So that's number one. Like step one is know what your goals are. Is it because you want to increase your brand awareness, you know, clarity of your message. When you get interviewed every single week on a podcast, you'll get very clear on what your message is. And you know, like our coach Kelly Ridge talks about like, Mm -hmm. what is your conviction, that conviction marketing she does a lot of training on, like, what do you stand for and what is your message? And I'm telling you, if you get interviewed every single week about it, you will be very clear about what your message is and what you stand for. So um, that's a really good goal. And then of course, it just comes down to specific results. Like, do you want more clients? Do you need more leads? Um, So know what that goal is get clear on the target audience. So if you want more clients or you want more people to know about you, obviously, who do you want to know about you? Um, I love working with service-based entrepreneurs, six and seven figures. So I'm pumped to be on a show like this because that's who's listening, right? So I like go on shows where I know I'm going to be speaking to the types of entrepreneurs that I know I can help. Um, so you want to know who your target audience is, your goal is, and then get clear on what is your message? How can you help them? What can you teach to those people? And then find the shows that, that they're listening to. Nice. And how do we find them? Yeah. So, all right. It comes down to a lot of research. People think that there's just like this magic database. Like what's the one website that I need to go to? And I like, wish I had it for you. So there is a lot of different resources that you can use to find shows in our company. We have two full-time show researchers that that's their job every day is researching and finding. So it really just comes down to hard work and creative searching and networking. Mm -hmm. Um, There are some helpful websites that I will tell you. There's a website called Listen Notes, which I think is really great because you can search somebody's name and actually see all the shows that they've been a guest on. Um, There's different websites like Chartable. I think it'll show you kind of how a show ranks. Um, Radio Guest List is another resource where you can be getting emails several times a week with podcasts that are looking for guests. So there's lots, if you just search around, there's lots of different helpful websites like that will bring you the opportunities. Um, Of course, you can also that's what we do. So we're an agency. So you can of course hire someone to do it, but there's lots of different resources. It comes down to effective researching and then networking. So looking for opportunities that are, that are out there, like putting yourself in rooms. And I put that in quotes because like virtual rooms where people are looking for guests. And that's not necessarily like a podcast guest Facebook group, but it's like, we're in a mastermind together and you posted looking for people. And I was like, Oh, absolutely. Like we're in the same mastermind, what we haven't met yet looks like a great connection. So if you actually just put your kind of open your eyes and keep an eye out for those opportunities, then, then they do start coming to you. (laughs) Nice. Nice. So we're putting this time into research. We're putting this time into being interviewed. Are we going to get a return on that time? Are we going to get a return on the time we're putting in? Yeah, that's such a great question because that's often what, what happens, right? We're like, okay, I, I, I did the work. I created my, my one sheet. I know what I'm talking about. I'm starting to get the interviews. No, when am I start going to get, you know, when am I going to get clients from the strategy? Mm-hmm. When am I going to get that return on investment? So this is a slow burn. <laughs> this is a strategy that takes time. So number one, I want everyone to really know that if you want to get the biggest bang for your buck, if you want to really get a big return on your investment in podcast guesting, commit at least a year to it. Don't do it for less than a year. And there's a couple of reasons I say that. Number one, just the nature of how podcasts are produced. Shows are pre-recorded. So I don't know what what your back time is, but usually when I record an interview as a guest, they tell me this will be live in like two months or six weeks or something. Mm -hmm. It's just because hosts are pre-recording a ton of interviews. Like they'll Mm -hmm. batch produce, they'll pre-record. So you could start recording interviews today, but they probably won't be live for a couple of months realistically. And then from there, people don't necessarily all listen to the interview the day it comes out. Like I listened to a podcast interview on Unstoppable Entrepreneur Radio. I think she launched it last week. I just got around to listening to it today. Like it takes time for people to download and then end up listening. And then you have to remember people buy when they're ready to buy. Listeners don't always need your service or product the moment that they hear you on a podcast. (laughs) 
Absolutely. You know, that's like, (laughs) you know, but it really just comes down to that. They might not need you in that moment. And for many service-based entrepreneurs, one client is worth multiple thousands of dollars. Maybe we are entry-level programs, five, 10 grand. You know, we're working with people long-term. People also do not make that investment after hearing you for 30 minutes one time. They need multiple touches. We, you know, we teach that people need 16 touch points before they end up buying. So that podcast interview is often the first time that you're touching them. And so you want to effectively get them into your funnel, into your Facebook group, into your email list, and then really make sure you nurture them. So by the time, let's say they hear you on a podcast today, and then they come into your funnel and then you're, t- it could be multiple months before they're then end up you know, ready to buy from you. Mm, Absolutely. So how do we do that? How do we move them along that journey with us so that even when we're a guest on a podcast and they've only heard us once and they, they have no idea who we are, we end up getting those touch points and we end up getting them into our own ecosystem. Yeah. So number one, consistency with podcast guesting. That's number one, because your 16 touch points could actually be 16 different podcast interviews. Mm. And so that's number one, being consistent and strategic with the types of shows that you're going on. So if you know who your target audience is and you're every single week, you're appearing every single week, if not twice a week, you're appearing on podcasts that are in your target market. Many of your potential clients will see you or hear you. And the beautiful part about actually promoting your interviews is they might not always actually listen to your interviews, but they see, maybe they follow a host that you were a guest on their show and they see, Oh, I see that, you know, and that was just on this podcast and I just heard her on this show. And then I see her being promoted over here. So you just want to be on the radar. I mean, people tell me because I've been doing this consistently for a long time and, you know, really make an effort to be promoting and, and repurposing the content. By the time some people come to me, I just got a new client this week who I met like a year ago. And actually she, I had a call with her a year ago and she did not buy, like she wasn't ready. She didn't feel like it was the right fit. And then she came back to me and was like, I have been following you and I am just so impressed to see how you've grown. And it's like, that's the power of consistency when you just keep Mm -hmm. showing up. People might not be ready the moment they meet you, but then they come back and it's like the easiest sale ever because you've been nurturing and growing your trust with them over that time. So number like the consistency is number one. You just have to keep showing up to keep building your trust with people. Um, and then of course, having an effective call to action when you are a podcast guest, Mm. um, you want to make sure number one, you're giving a compelling interview, providing content that people are, you know, I I hope there are people listening to this going, Oh my gosh, I'm writing this down. This is so good. Right? Like that's your goal. You want people to be like, Holy crap, this is amazing information. This is exactly what I need. And then at the end of the interview, when the host asks where can people find you, you're giving a clear, concise direction on how they can find you, not giving five different websites. Yes. Yeah. I know that I've certainly been, I listen to a lot of podcasts when I'm running and I certainly do listen to some and I think, Oh, I have to stop. I have to, I just have to write some stuff in my notes because I need to remember this, you know, whilst, Mm -hmm. and that's the effect you want to have, isn't it? When you're a podcast guest that somebody would, you know, potentially stop their run and type up some notes on right bearing. Exactly. Or like I was listening to a podcast this morning and I'm like doing my makeup and everything. And I realized I had like kind of tuned out, you know, and you realize you're like, yes. oh, I wasn't listening that moment. And then literally what they said was like, that's so good. And I was like, I rewinded it. Yeah. I was like, wait, I missed the really good part. Yeah. yeah. I've done that many, many times as well. I know exactly what you mean. So we're entering this podcast strategy. We've got, we've got a way to kind of find and get on, um, get on as guests. We understand the ROI of it. What are some of the pitfalls? What are some of the things that could trip us up along the way as we, uh, as we embark on this strategy? Yeah. Number one, the biggest pitfall is thinking this is a place where you can be pitching and selling. Mm. This is, this is another form of content marketing. You are providing free, valuable information as a way to attract people to you. This is not advertising. It's not direct response marketing where you are getting people to immediately make a buying decision. So number one, you do not want to go into these interviews thinking you're going to have an opportunity to pitch your paid program. So that is number one. Um, We talked already a lot about consistency. So I think honestly, the biggest pitfall I see is people just don't, they don't commit long-term to the strategy. They do a couple of interviews. Maybe they do one every other month or two a month and then skip a month. Like it's just, there's no consistency or strategy. That's, that's another one. And then the call to action, 
they're giving way too many CTAs. Like, you know, oh, I, you can follow me on this, like email me, but then I have a website, but then I have a YouTube and then to listen to my podcast. And it's like, whoa, 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 just give one. People need clear direction. They need to be led. (laughs) And if you give them five different options, they don't know what to do. So give people one option. Cause if you, and you feel like, Oh, I don't want to, I want to make sure they know this. And I want to make sure they know this. Take them to that one place where then once they get to that place, then you can take them to the next place. And once they get there, you can take them to the next place. Mm. So it's almost like it's, it's almost in the same way that, you know, you traditionally describe a funnel. So Mm -hmm. moving them along the stages that you want them to travel in order to eventually make a decision as to whether they want to work with you. Exactly. Exactly. You really need to look at this as a long-term game. I never expect going into an interview that someone's going to hear it and want to buy right away. Mm -hmm. I, my goal is that people hear it and then want to hang out with me a little bit more, you know? So I just, it's like, that's your goal. You just want to kind of keep building your circle. And then once they're in that circle, they're going to get content from you. They're going to keep getting nurtured. You're going to, they're going to see you continue to show up at which point when it's a good fit, then they end up investing in your services. And honestly, if your interviews are compelling enough, people will still come to you and be like, I need your service right now. Like that will still happen. You just have to know that that's not necessarily the point. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And so is there one call to action type that works better than others? Because I've heard some people say before, you know, if you're on a podcast, if you have your own podcast, that's the best call to action because it's the easiest transition. Or if you're on a Facebook live, you know, go, your own Facebook page, for example, is the easiest transition for people. Have you seen that or not necessarily? Well, we feature a lot of our clients in our Facebook group, you know, case study interviews to share what they're doing. Nice. Um, so we see a lot of different CTAs work for our clients who are getting amazing returns, incredible results. So I'll give you a couple examples of what they're doing. Cause I think it really comes down to what types of clients do you want to be attracting and what kind of content do they like consuming, you know? So, um, you can give away like our client, Mark Willis is a certified financial planner. He's made over $266,000 in sales from interviews. He invites people to schedule a free consultation with a member of his team and get a free copy of his book. Nice. So, and he positions it really, really well, high value. It's not, he doesn't position it as a sales call. It's like, how about a call with our team? Our client, Melanie Rogers does the same thing. She has a company with a team of therapists. They help people with disordered eating. And she goes, have a call with a, we'll have a free call with one of our therapists which is like, as soon as you hear therapist free, you're like, yeah, hang on. sign me up, you know, <laughs> sign me up. So these free consults are working really well for a lot of our clients. Mm-hmm. Um, what we do is we tell people about our free Facebook group. Mm-hmm. We always get the email address when they join mm-hmm. the Facebook group. So at the same time, we're growing our email list, we're building our group. And then we've got a clear strategy that I'm sure you're doing the same yeah. thing since we're yeah. in the same mastermind <laughs> of providing weekly content, doing launches, stuff like that. Exactly. So those are a couple of the strat of the calls to action. And then there's a lot of other options like quizzes and just, you know, free lead magnets and things like that. I think at the end of the day, you do need to test and see what works for your particular market. Mm-hmm. Um, and then go from there. Nice. And of course, if you have a consistent strategy around podcast guesting, then you have the ability to test, monitor and tweak as necessary as well Mm -hmm. with that too. Yep, absolutely. And I will say that um, for a long time, I just, before we had our Facebook group and we didn't always have like a clear strategy mm-hmm. of email marketing. We, I did it. I've been doing interviews for years and I would just say interviewconnections.com. That's our main website. I don't typically advise just to game your main website because people yes. get there and they're like, what? But I've been getting results for years. So, you know, I think as long as it's one clear, simple direction, it can just be your website. Um, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Um, Jessica, Thank you so much. You have shared some absolute gold with people and I am sure that they are frantically writing notes um, and working out the steps that they want to take and putting that to action and putting that in their diaries and making sure that they can actually uh, work this strategy because it is an awesome strategy. So thank you so much for sharing that with us, Jessica. And of course, 
where can people find you online? <laughs> I, yeah, we have a free Facebook group. It's called Guest Expert Profit Lab. So if you go to Facebook, Guest Expert Profit Lab or interviewconnections.com slash group, we'll redirect you there. It's a Facebook group exclusively for six, seven and eight figure entrepreneurs. So if that is you, please join us, interviewconnections.com slash group. Beautiful. We will obviously put that in the show notes as well. So people can just click on that and uh, head on through to your group. Jessica, again, thank you so much for joining me on Uncover Wealth Radio. I appreciate your time. Uh, Thanks again. Thanks, Annette.